In this video, I'm going to show you how to separate your DTF or DTG art going on black shirts, seamlessly blending that artwork into the t-shirt, eliminating having to print a big black box or some of the common issues that come up with transparencies, which is a white halo or haze around your artwork with the use of halftones. Let's go ahead and jump right into this tutorial. Okay, I have my artwork pulled up. You could see that this particular piece of artwork might be difficult to print with DTF or DTG. You could end up just needing to print a big black box around this thing to make it look right, or you might end up with some sort of weird white halo around it, but I'm gonna show you how to get around that. And one way to do that is by turning this into half tones. I always like to start out checking my image size, making sure that it is high enough of a quality for DTF or DTG printing. So we'll go up to image and image size. And we can see that this image is 45 inches wide by 72 DPI. I have a link so that way you can download this image and follow along. It's a completely original image, so feel free to do what you want with it, do your tests. But we can see that this image is 45 inches wide, almost 46 inches wide at 72 DPI. Generally, I would suggest printing your images at full print size at 300 DPI. So let's go ahead and resample this image. At the moment, if we go over the pixels, go from inches to pixels, you can see that it is 3,300 pixels wide. Now let's go back over the inches and then we'll deselect resample here and we'll type in 300 and that will give us a print size of 11 inches at 300 DPI. That's the maximum print size. We could always scale this down. We won't lose any quality in our image. So we'll go ahead and we'll hit OK. So let's go over to our layers down here at the bottom. We'll go ahead and make this a layer so it's not a background layer. I'm going to duplicate this layer so I can just click and drag, drag it over to the plus sign here. You could also right click and select duplicate layer. Now the next thing I'm going to do is go over to my channels and I'm going to hold the command button down on a Macintosh. So moving forward, if you're on a Macintosh, you'll hold command down. If you're on a PC, hold control. And you want to make sure that your artwork does have a black background in order to make this work. So if your artwork is on a transparent background, go ahead and make a background that has black and then continue to proceed. So we're gonna hold command down, hover over RGB here, and we'll go ahead and we'll click on that. And it will bring up a selection of our artwork on that black background. And we'll go over layers. Let's make a new layer. We'll just click this little button down here at the bottom to make a new layer. Let's hit D on the keyboard and we're going to fill this with black. So we can go up to edit and fill. And from our content here, we can select black and we'll hit okay. Next thing I'm going to do is make a new layer. So all you have to do is go down to the bottom here and click on the plus sign. We'll hit command D to deselect and we want to fill this layer with white. So we can hold shift and delete. That will bring up our fill and we're going to want to select white this time. So we'll select white and hit okay. And let's move that layer down below layer one. And I'm going to select both of these layers here and I'm going to hit command E so that way we merge that into one layer. Now the next step is to right click on layer one our layer that we merged our selection and that white background into. And we're gonna go all the way up to the top where it says duplicate layer and select that. Now we're gonna go down here to where it says destination and document. And we wanna select new and we don't have to necessarily give it any particular name. So what this is going to do is take that layer and shoot it out to a new document. So we'll go ahead and we'll hit okay. If you would like to speed up your separations, avoid having to go through all these steps to separate your DTG or DTF artwork. I have a new plugin for Photoshop called ActionSeps DTX. It quickly separates your DTF or DTG artwork with just a click of the button. So that way you can quickly separate your artwork and move on to production. If you purchase ActionSeps DTX, you get lifetime access to the separations and all updates. You also get access to our community 
with other like-minded decorators so that way you can share ideas back and forth, get help troubleshooting, and it will help support the channel so that way I can continue to make free content such as this. Click the link below to find out more and learn more about Action Steps DTX and how it can help you in your business and speed up your separation process. Now, to the tutorial. <laughs> now, once we have that new document open, we're gonna go to Image, Mode, Grayscale. And at this point, what we're essentially doing is use this as a way to select the image and make our half tones. And let me show you what I'm talking about here. So I'm going to go to image, adjustments, levels. And what you're seeing in black is going to be what part of the artwork you pull from that separation. And it's okay to have a little bit of black in there and print some black onto that t-shirt. What we're really trying to avoid is really printing too much black. We don't necessarily need to print all that black. And whatever you see in gray here will end up being half tones. So I'm gonna take this middle slider right here and we're gonna just bump this right on up because I wanna grab a good amount of that graphic. And you can start to see that we are getting in the background we're starting to select quite a bit of that and we don't want that in our artwork because we don't want to have a bunch of half tones going all the way out here we want it to be a nice smooth transition so we'll come up to this little white arrow here we'll pull that back until that goes away and you can adjust this to your liking and try this method over and over but i'm going to slide this up just a little bit more and we'll let some of the areas in the astronaut suit here and these edges, we'll let that be half tone so it gradually transitions into our t-shirt. And there's some areas up here that I think I might want to get rid of, up where it says Pioneer. We'll just slide this white slider back just a little bit, and let's see how that turns out. So we'll hit OK. So we're going to go up to Image, Mode, and select Bitmap. And it's gonna ask us to flatten our layers, so we can select OK. Now at this point, what we're doing is we're turning all those gray tones into half tones. And if you're not familiar with what half tones are, essentially they are tiny little dots that are used to replicate gradients, very commonly seen in screen printing. If you would like more information on that, leave a comment down below saying, hey, I would like a lesson on what half tones are. This document is 11 inches wide by 300 DPI. So for our output, we're going to select 300 DPI and we'll hit OK. Next, it's going to ask what DPI do we want our half tones at? Depending on your setup, you may be able to hold anywhere from 30 DPI all the way up to 45 DPI, maybe even more. It just depends on your setup, whether you're doing DTG or DTF. We're gonna play this on the safe end. Let's try 35, 35 works pretty well. So we'll hit okay. And now you can see once we zoom in to the edges here that it did turn into a bunch of half tones where we had all those grayscale transitions, it turned it into half tones. But when we zoom out, you can't really tell that they're, they're little half tone dots. So now that we have that done, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna hit Command I on the keyboard to inverse that because in Photoshop, with our next step, whatever is black is going to mask that out of our artwork. And I'll show you here in a second. Now I'm gonna hit Command A on the keyboard to select everything and hit Command C to copy. We'll go over to our original document. We'll turn off layer one. We'll come down to our artwork, which is a copy of our original art. Let's go ahead and name layer zero. Instead of it being layer zero copy, we'll just call this artwork. Now that we have that layer selected, we're gonna come down here to the mask, this little mask icon down here at the bottom. So we're gonna go ahead and click on that and that will add a mask window to our layer. Now we're gonna come over to that mask window and we're gonna hold option down on the keyboard and click on that. And what that will do is bring up our mask. Now we're gonna hit Command A on the keyboard and then Command V to paste our mask that we just made in our separate window and turned into half tones. So we'll go ahead and we'll paste that in there. We'll hit Command D to deselect. And we just need to come over to our original artwork thumbnail. We'll click on that. Now, if we turn off our original artwork, which is layer zero, we turn that off. You'll see our artwork pulled from that black background. 
And you can see that we do have some of the black there, which is fine because it's still going to look nice printed onto your t-shirt. However, we're not having to print that big black box to make this thing work or ending up with issues with a haze around that, making our art just look unprofessional. Now to see how well this worked, let's go ahead and we'll make a new layer. We'll call this t-shirt color and we'll hold shift down and hit delete. We'll fill that with black. We'll hit okay. And we can slide that down underneath our artwork and turn our original artwork on. And the reason being is we can see how much of the artwork we either kept or lost. So let's zoom into some of these side areas over here and we'll turn our t-shirt color on and off. And you'll see the difference between our separation and our original artwork. You can see we did lose just a touch over here, but I don't think that's too big of a deal. This would still end up printing out awesome. If you want to, you could always go back to your untitled document here, hit undo a few times until you get back to your original selection and go through the routine all over again of making your mask and then bringing it back over to the original document. And you could just come in here to your mask and paste in your new mask. So at this point, what we would do is we would just go ahead and save this out as a file that works with your software for your DTG or your DTF. In this case, we could just save it as a PNG with a transparent background and let our DTF and DTG machine software, whatever that may be, do its thing. I hope this tutorial was helpful. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't, so that way you can get notifications when I post new tutorials like this completely free. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up if this was helpful, and we'll see you in the next one. I'm gonna keep working on this. This is awesome, this is turning out great. Wish I would have learned this years ago.